is, oh my goodness, such a thrill. On the With us right now, the one and only, the great Paul Stanley. Paul, every listener knows, I've been doing this for 30 years in the same market, every listener knows that the when, whenever I'm asked, who would you want to talk to, alive or dead, it's always Paul Stanley, uh, you know, my favorite my favorite rock star ever, my first concert, I, I hate to even ruin the interview by telling you how much I love you, <laughs> but I, I'm just a huge fan, and the fact you'd come on with us really means a lot to me. Oh, thank you. Well, um, glad to be here, and uh, better that you're interviewing me alive than dead. <laughs> well, that, that, and you know, that is true. I, you know, and I want to start with what I know we want to talk about today, and that's your painting. And I want you to know that I actually own, uh, you know, all, all you need is love. That's one of the ones that I own. And for my family, it, they know that it is like the most important thing <laughs> that I own. I had to make up my will uh, a couple weeks ago, and I don't know which child to leave it to. <laughs> I'm afraid like one will think I love the other more than the, the other if I leave them the Paul Stanley painting. So I think I'm going to have to buy another one. But, but t- tell me about the, uh, uh, about the Wentworth Gallery, because that's where we got ours. Uh, and you have a, another showing, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, when the band uh, hasn't been touring, I, I tended to do probably about six uh, shows a year um, through Wentworth Galleries, who really uh, represented me for, oh, I'd say about 16, 17 years. And uh, it's a great opportunity for people who really know nothing about art to come see pieces and if uh, you don't like my art maybe it'll inspire you to do yours uh, otherwise I've been very fortunate uh, there are a lot of uh, very serious collectors who have uh, uh, acquired pieces of mine and and it's uh, it's been amazing um, to say that uh, I'm the most successful celebrity artist well that goes without much saying but the proof is i'm probably one of the most successful artists period although i fly under the radar in terms of the the art world so uh i'm i'm having a ball uh for me life has always been about why not rather than why so uh i started painting about 20 years ago and never had any thoughts of showing any of it but as it turned out i had a few pieces in my house that people would ask me who did, you know, who who did that. So uh, at some point I started showing it and uh, the rest was mind-bogglingly successful. What I love is that you, I've seen in other interviews before, you've talked about how you don't really go by what other artists do. You do what you think is right. And and when you do that, nobody can tell you it's bad, you know, like like you're doing what you love. And, and I, I love all of your pieces. I mean, do you do you have a favorite piece that you've done? I really don't. Um, I'm always most excited about what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I think some painters and some artists spend their lives perfecting a style. I don't want to do that. What I'm trying to perfect is an approach, which means that I get to do whatever I'm feeling at any given time. So I think the only thing about my paintings that's consistent throughout all of them is color, vibrant color. To me, color is a a reflection of life and my life is pretty vibrant. So with that in mind, I know nothing about color relationships. I've never studied anything. So I paint what feels right to me rather than what's correct. Yeah, and, and, and I think all the pieces are great. Aren't you doing now some art with guitars, like doing artwork on guitars? Yeah, I've been doing that for quite a while. I, I take some of my signature model guitars and uh, they're painted. They're not for playing after they've been painted. They actually are um, sold in a frame, in a large frame, and they're, they're beautiful. Um, I have to say that it's hard for the galleries to keep them in any kind of stock because as soon as they're in, they're gone. And they are works of art on wood on can- uh, as opposed to canvas. And have you been doing a lot more since the, the touring is over? Have you ramped up and done a lot more um, painting? I was doing a lot of painting uh, even during tours. If I was home, 
uh, usually in the morning I drive some of my kids to school and then head for the studio to paint. So um, that really hasn't changed. Um, obviously the, the idea that the band's not going to tour anymore is uh, a, a big game changer. It, it changes a lot of things, but uh, KISS continues and is going to surprise a lot of people in some of the things that we're involved in. Um, pretty much to, to uh, take the place of, of playing live, although um, I know that initially some people saw the uh, avatars that we introduced at the last two shows and really they they weren't they're far from done i think what we were trying to show people was that um we're going to find our way into all kinds of creative areas the avatars when they're finally done and that's a a multi-year process are going to be mind-boggling they're going to be pretty awesome Hey, since you brought up the last two shows and, and you know, the very last show had to be super emotional for you uh, and, and for Gene. But, uh, I mean, can, can you tell us what was that like? Was it was it as, as emotional as you thought it was going to be or even more? I think it was kind of surreal um, when you're really faced with something. We had 250 shows around the world in the end of the road uh, tour. And when it got down to single digits it became very, very real. And those last shows at Madison Square Garden were very uh, um, emotional, but also like a roller coaster because uh, the audiences were just really throughout the tour, but um, obviously for special reasons, those last shows at Madison Square Garden, the love and uh, embracing and appreciation from the audience was was really beyond anything I could have hoped for. And uh, to be playing somewhere where I remember initially playing and uh, seeing my mom and dad in the audience or Gene's mom, and to find us where we are now, it was uh, it was you know pretty pretty emotional and um, jubilant and sad yeah you know yeah and as a fan i mean i i I, uh, I rented it and watched it at the house and i'm sitting there and i'm an emotional guy i'm like crying at the end you know like a baby but uh, uh and my buddy del torberg is texting me at the time and i know i think you know dale and he um yeah, he's such a wonderful guy, and he's texting me, and he's like, oh my God, he was talking about your your son Evan and his band, and I'm like, how special does it have to be for Paul that Evan is killing it on stage? I heard the fans absolutely gave the band love, and um, I don't, for you, it just had to be just a, a great night, I mean, I would think. It, it only added to it, the, it to, to see it kind of go full circle. When um, we saw it, Evan's band before the before the U.S. leg of the tour, and uh, it was so obvious how good, not good, how great they were, that uh, we all looked at each other and said they should open the the tour because if it wasn't them, it was going to be somebody else, and right. uh, they were terrific and uh, earned it as much as any other band could have, and um, I expect great things from them they they're they're a terrific band and terrific guys so i want to ask this is this is a, a kiss fan question that everyone was talking about that that day and i was like oh my god if you watched on the show you could see evan and nick got along real well they're buddies oh my god this is what's going to happen evan's going to take over as the star child you know uh, nick's going to take over as as the demon i mean like i, I has that ever been flown out is that something you think they would ever be interested in is that something you would ever want that's nothing they're interested in. <laughs> uh, thankfully, um, they both found their niches. And um, um, I think they, between Sophie and Nick and Evan, they all kind of, they consider themselves brothers, sisters, family. Um, look, Shannon to me is like my sister-in-law. I mean, we've been together. Gina and I have been together since we lived at home. So to to create this life that we've created for 
for ourselves and for each other is a is a is an incredible bond and to to know Nick and Sophie from the time they were babies and 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 vice versa uh, with Jean and, and Evan and my other children it's uh it's unlike a lot of other situations so uh, Nick and Evan are big supporters of each other but neither one of them is ever going to find themselves <laughs> Uh, on a stage with a kiss sign. <laughs> so that's that's not going to happen for all my kiss friends out there who keep telling me they think that's going to happen. That that's not going to happen. Something else, Paul, is I just love. It seems like in the fat past five years or so, as it we're getting, it was getting closer to the end of the road tour. To hear the love that Gene has for you, and to hear the love you have for Gene as a fan. That just fills you up inside. And I know it probably sounds goofy and corny, you know, but but I've been a fan since I was 12. So to see you guys sharing that kind of love has just been has just been super nice. And it seems, you know, obviously super genuine. Uh, do you think you and Gene have gotten closer in the past five or six years as it was coming uh, to, to an end? Totally. Um, you know, time tells everything and um, how people react to crises and good times bad times that's how you judge them not only as people but your relationship to them and uh gene and i have never been closer we we as i said earlier we've been through so much together that um we're really family and um if there were some uh battles and spats and there were absolutely you you can't sure. be with somebody for 50 years and and it's all smiles and hugs but at this point more than ever we go hey we won what is there to to what is there to bicker about what is there to to uh you know have have arguments about it's it's uh we did it and and uh look what we've given each other yeah, absolutely amazing. And I've always super admired the way you have handled controversy or controversial questions or things in the media. And and when you were a young man, when you first started in KISS, like, you know, you didn't have any media class. You didn't know how to handle certain situations and stuff. I mean, how did you learn that throughout the years to be able to answer questions, you know, in a way that, uh, I don't know, skirts the controversy? Um. I, I, I don't think that uh, being diplomatic is being evasive. And I don't think that um, being honest means being cruel. So um, I try to find my way through that. And uh, certain, certain subjects, I think, are private. And uh, um, what I want to talk about and what I don't want to talk about. And uh, some people have an issue. And certainly at some point when I was younger, I thought, well, success gives you a platform that you should necessarily use because um, you're not qualified uh, to speak on certain subjects. However, as I got older, I went, I'm as qualified as the next person and my opinion should can uh, with any more credibility than the person next to me. But to not voice my opinion is uh, to do a disservice to my experience. I, I remember the first time you know, I, I, in the younger days, like, you know, you guys never really talked about things that were controversial on stage. And I remember seeing and this is not controversial, but the first time I remember you were on stage talking about veterans and how much veterans meant to you. And I'm like, wow, this is a this is a different Paul Stanley. And it seemed like you had made a decision that you were going to try to be a good role model. Is, is that is that me creating that or did you make a decision at one point that I think I should be a good role model in certain ways? I think that um, we should lead by example. It's uh, it's all well and good to say things, but um, then it's also important to back them up. I think uh, as time went on, I, I, I realized that there were things that were important to me, and if I can help push them into 
uh, the media or push them into people's consciousness, then that's a good thing. It's a good thing to, to be reminded that um, this country is kept free, not by politicians, but by men and women who um, choose at this point to put themselves in harm's way for their country. So um, that's something that needs to be uh, spot, spot lit or spotlighted as often as possible. Um, so that's just one of many subjects that I think, um, I don't think there's any being on the fence about those things. There are certain things that uh, should be obvious, you know, um, freedom's only free for the people who don't have to pay the price. And those are the people who we owe everything to. So as far as military, um, that's something that all of us in KISS have always been very strong about. And uh, there's other subjects, you know, whether it's drugs and, and uh, things where um, to promote a myth or um, people's misunderstandings is kind of like being complicit in, in uh, their going off the rails or um, taking the wrong path. Um, if I can at all influence somebody to, I don't know, be safe or lead a, a life that uh, makes them happy, then I should. I, I, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel like me, but I, I watch to see kind of how you react to a lot of different things. And one of the things I totally respect and love is when you took your kids to see Taylor Swift. And here is Paul Stanley, like, you know, one of the greatest, you know, meta rock guys in the world. And you're giving love to Taylor Swift. I just thought that was super cool. Did, did you get any, I don't know, any backlash from the hard rock people about that? I don't know. And um, I wouldn't care. Um, I, I I think that music is, is something to bring out, but the idea of music separating people is contrary to what music should be. Music should bring people together, and um, the idea that we should only listen to one kind of music is like saying we should eat one food. Right. Uh, that's a great recipe for malnourished uh, people. So uh, when when people champion one kind of music over another, I get that. But when they dismiss music that they don't listen to, maybe they should give it another listen. I agree. I, and another thing, we got a buddy of mine who's a huge Tupac fan. And when Tupac got to introduce you guys on stage and to see his reaction, like, were you surprised that Tupac was such a, you know, what, what was that? What was that meeting like? Well, it was it was uh, I'm always surprised um, by our impact. I, I tend to say that um, bands make music and phenomenons impact society. So when you cross lines and um, have impact and uh, people outside of uh, your realm know who you are, um, that's always very, very gratifying, whether it's Tupac or um, Garth Brooks. Um, you know, you, you can run the gamut. Um, uh, of people who have been influenced by us in some way or another doesn't mean they sound like us it means perhaps we were um part of the impetus to do what they do right yeah you know and i try to figure out because listen I, i'm just a radio guy in orlando but the band Kiss, and you in particular, has made me feel like I can do anything I want to do. I can do anything I want to try. And uh, has been a huge impact on my life. And I know it sounds silly, but, uh, you know, when Tom Morello introduced you guys at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like, I'm a 58-year-old guy, and I'm crying, you know, uh, for some reason, because it's so important to, I think, so many people. And uh, does that get old hearing all of that? 
all of that, uh, uh, ac- uh, you know, adulation? How can adulation um, get old? Um, if it gets old, then you don't deserve it. Right. Uh, I'm I'm thankful, and uh, Tom Morello is uh, is just a, an amazing person, a brilliant mind, and uh, to have him champion us was uh humbling it uh that's the only way to put it and um to have that kind of impact on people who want to lead the crusade and uh wave the the kiss banner you know it it doesn't get better than that that that's uh that's proof that what you've done um has merit yeah well, I will tell you this too. I mean, they always say don't meet your uh, heroes, but I mean, I've, I've I've been lucky to meet you several times thanks to Dale Torberg, and you have always been the kindest, sweetest person. One day you were sh- on your phone showing me uh, your pizza maker, and you making pizzas for your kids, and I'm just like, that, that's just a super, that's a super cool thing. Do you still do that? You're still making pizzas for the kids? Totally, totally. Um, I I love cooking. I cook for my my kids, for my family. Um, I'm making pizzas a lot and, uh, I like that stuff. Um, I didn't become famous to get away from those simple things that are sometimes the most important. What's more important than family? What's more important than being a good dad, being a good husband? For me, that's, that's the foundation of it all. So yeah, um. That's what I do. But you think, uh, Paul, a lot of rock stars don't make it to that finish line. A, rock, a lot of rock stars don't get to where you are, you, you know, uh, I mean, as far as having the family and, and everything. So uh, good on you, man. You're, you're a great inspiration. And, and I want to remind our listeners, if you want to go see Paul, he's at the Wentworth Gallery. That's going to be February the 23rd at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel. And also he'll be at, at Boca Raton. And that's on Saturday, February the 24th. From six to eight, and if you need more information, you can always get hold of me, and I'll I'll pass it on. But um, Paul Stanley, man, I, I can't I can't thank you enough for taking time to talk to me. And if you ever need help promoting anything, I'm I, I'm, I'm in Orlando, and I'm always here for for Paul. You got it. I will. Uh, first phone call will be to you. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. The great Paul Stanley. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Take care.